Hey guys, my name is Jamin. This is my channel PC Monkey, where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer do-it-yourself help videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a Dell computer that's giving you some sort of blue screen error, the blue screen of death, uh, or preparing automatic repair, or something like that when you try to start your computer. Before we begin guys, a couple quick things. First of all, please remember to like, share, subscribe if this was helpful. If I do help you solve a problem and you want to support my channel further, a super thanks is always appreciated. Second and last quick thing, a quick shout out to my sponsor, NiceHash. NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused power online to people who mine cryptocurrency and you get paid for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to earn some side money with no work. It's a fun way to start dabbling in the world of crypto. Uh, you can check them out here, or I'll fill you in a little more about them at the end of the video. So now let's get into the project. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a series of troubleshooting steps to identify the cause of this problem and then how to fix it. The idea with troubleshooting is you wanna start off with the easiest to troubleshoot or the cheapest to fix, Find out if that's the cause first, and if it's not the cause, move on to more complicated or more expensive fixes after that. So one of the easiest things this could be is your computer may just be confused. It may be trying to boot off of an external device. So what I'm gonna have you do for the first test is unplug all your external devices, your uh, USB mouse, your USB keyboard, um, an external backup hard drive. Unplug everything that's plugged into your computer, try to start your computer, see if that fixes it. If that does, what you could be seeing is you could be seeing the computer trying to boot off of one of those external devices. If that's the case, go into BIOS during startup, go into your boot priority order, and make sure your internal hard drive is first. I'll show you that later in the video in another step, how to get into BIOS on your Dell computer. After making that change and double checking that your internal hard drive is first in the boot priority, that problem should go away and it shouldn't repeat. If that doesn't turn out to be your case, we'll move on to the second test. So the next test is gonna involve testing your actual hard drive or solid state drive. This will involve physically unplugging it and plugging it back in to make sure it's not a loose connection. And it will also involve using Dell's built-in diagnostic software to test whether the hard drive is healthy. It's up to you guys which you do first. In some computers, the hard drive is very easily accessible. Um, in your case, maybe you do wanna flip the computer over, unplug it, plug it back in, make sure the connection is secure. If your hard drive is not easily accessible and you have to take off the entire bottom case, maybe you want to run the diagnostic first, but I'll leave that up to you. I'll show you how to do both now. So to run the diagnostic, I'm going to hit the power button and start tapping on F12 right away. So power button, tapping on F12 right away. So there's a lot of different Dell computers out there. Yours may not look exactly like mine does, but you, what you're gonna be looking for is this. Dell Diagnostics, right here in the middle for me, run system tests to identify any issues. We're gonna click on that. So as you can see, my quick test in progress has already started. Yours may start automatically, or you may have to select from a list of tests. Be aware you're looking for a hard drive test, solid state drive test, or storage test, most likely. If you wanna run a complete system test, that's fine, but most likely this is not a battery issue, a RAM issue, most likely it's drive related. So again, storage or hard drive, they're the same thing. So here it gave me a charger error, but no hard drive error. Um, some of you down here in the bottom left will have advanced tests, we'll click on that. So this is where you would test some more things. You can run the entire test, or you can uncheck things you don't want to run. Again, we're looking for this. Disk one, yours may call it storage, it may call it hard drive, but that's what we're looking to test. So there are a variety of responses you can get from this test. We'll go through the bad ones first. If you see that your hard drive is bad and it actually says hard drive failed the test, most likely your hard drive is just bad and it needs to be replaced. If you need help with that, let me know, but you would basically replace your hard drive install your operating system to the new one, and unfortunately, most likely your data on the drive is now lost. Uh, sometimes computer shops can recover that data, very often we cannot. A good thing is if you're looking to change your hard drive, it's a good chance to update to a solid state drive, which break less often and are faster anyway. If the test results show your hard drive to be uninstalled, not installed, or in any other way not seen, maybe your hard drive is bad, like we just mentioned, or it could just be loose, maybe the connection is faulty. 
If that's the case, the next thing I'll show you how to do is how to reseat the hard drive. As mentioned earlier, you can do either one of these tests first, but now I'm going to show you how to actually unplug it, plug it back in, make sure that it's secure. So for the sake of an example, I have another laptop computer flipped over here. I'm using this computer because it has an easy access panel. Uh, for the video, it's a lot easier to get into this. Your computer may or may not have one of these. Many computers do, some do not. If you have to take off your entire bottom case because you don't have one, it's a little more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, send me a comment with what brand and model number computer you have, and I can help you get into your computer. Uh, usually you would just unscrew screws that go around it. Uh, sometimes they're under the rubber feet and you would take off your bottom case. For me, it's a little easier. I'm just gonna pop up this little access thing right here, unscrew my single screw that's holding in this panel, and I just pop this panel out like that. So again, it's a lot easier if your computer has an easy access panel. Another thing to look for, guys, you see my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. Either a pad like this or an anti-static bracelet is a really good idea to limit the chance of harm you can do your computer when entering it. If you guys need a list of supplies, I'm also using a screwdriver and a plastic pry tool. If you guys have any questions on supplies, check out the link above in the video. Um, it'll be a supply tools list that I use here in the shop. So to reseat a hard drive or unplug it and plug it back in, usually hard drives, solid state drives, they're held in by a caddy. We're gonna unscrew that caddy. And again, this computer ha has two hard drives. Most likely, a lot of you guys, your computer will only have one. But we're gonna do the one with the operating system on it if you have two. Gonna unscrew the caddy. And then we're gonna slide the hard drive away from its port and take it fully out. Make sure that it's held in securely into the caddy. It's not loose, there's actually a, a, a little bit of wiggle there. So I'm gonna tighten my hard drive screws in the caddy. And then I'm gonna set my hard drive back in, make sure it's lined up correctly and give it a good push right into the port. And then I'm gonna screw it back in. That's what we do to reseat a hard drive to make sure that a plug-in connection issue is not the reason why the computer won't see it. So after reseating the hard drive, you'd wanna start your computer again, uh, possibly even running that diagnostic scan again if it's not working. At this point, if the Dell diagnostic scan is still showing uninstalled or not there for any reason, it's probably bad because we did just make sure that physically it's connected correctly. And that applies to anything else. A lot of older computers have uh, other boards that the hard drives plug into or hard drive cables. Make sure if yours had that, mine did not. But make sure if you do to reseat those as well, unplug them from the motherboard, plug them back into the motherboard. But if the diagnostic scan is still saying not there, then your hard drive is probably bad. Replace it, install the new operating system to the new drive. So that's what to do if the hard drive is bad. But at this point, if the diagnostic scan is clearing your hard drive or your storage, and if it's showing it to be healthy, then most likely we're looking at a BIOS issue, uh, possibly even an operating system issue that we need to address. I'll show you how to do that in the next two steps. So now there's a couple things in BIOS I want you to check. So to access this on most Dell computers, I'm gonna hit power again. I'm gonna start tapping on F2 this time, however, to enter BIOS and not the diagnostic scan. So power, start tapping on F2. If you find that these function keys are not the right ones for you, play around with the other function keys. Some models may use different ones. So again, as mentioned before, your BIOS may not look like my BIOS. There are all different versions of it. Your computer may be older or newer. So don't go so much exactly where I'm looking, but scan around, look in your different tabs, look in your different options. Uh, try to find this information, these two things that I'm gonna show you. In my BIOS, I'm gonna go over here to integrated devices and click on that. Yours may be something else, but I'm gonna make sure that my date and time is correct. If your date and time is not correct, it could mess up how your computer boots up or prevent it from booting up at all. So if you need to change this, change your date and time, save, exit, restart your computer. If you find this is your issue, but you have to fix these date and time settings every time you turn your computer on, it could be a sign that your CMOS battery is bad. 
That's an internal component on your motherboard that is supposed to keep power to it and BIOS even when your computer's off. If it's dead, it means your motherboard and BIOS are losing power when your computer turns off and possibly some of your settings are resetting. Uh, there'll be a video link below in the description of how to access a CMOS battery in a computer. And again, if you need help with your specific computer, let me know in the comments and I can help you. If after changing the date and time, saving, exiting, and restarting the computer does not prove to be your issue, there's one more thing in BIOS I'm going to have you look at. The next thing I'm going to have you look at, on my left hand side, there's an option that says boot configuration. Uh, most likely yours will say something like that, boot priority, boot configuration, something like that. So I'm going to click on boot configuration, and in here you're going to see UEFI hard drive. Um, you'll either see UEFI, you'll either see legacy. Uh, you're going to see some different method here that's been selected. If you're seeing UEFI selected, unselect it, switch it over to legacy. Again, save, exit, try to restart your computer. The other way, if you're seeing legacy selected, unselect it, change it to UEFI, save, exit, restart the computer. So basically, guys, whatever you're seeing, I want you to switch it to the other one um, and then try to start your computer that way. Same as the date and time settings, if that helps you guys, then great. Maybe it was a one-time power loss, a one-time error, and you needed to just correct these settings, and now you're fine. But just like the date and time, if you have to do this every time you restart your computer, same issue. You may be looking at a bad CMOS battery. I would replace it. So now we've come to the last step that I'm going to show you in this video. If it's not hardware related, if it's not BIOS related, most likely at this point, I'm saying that it's probably operating system related. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot for that now. So one way of troubleshooting for the operating system is simply to try to reinstall the operating system. Since a lot of the computers I work on are refurb computers, I don't mind deleting all the data, reinstalling an operating system. In fact, I kind of prefer that. So at this point, I would just reinstall the operating system. There will be two links below in the description. One, how to install Windows 10. Another, how to install Windows 11. You can do both of those for free. Those videos explain how. If you have data you want to save, those videos will explain how you can reinstall while saving your data. Uh, but if you want to do some more troubleshooting with the operating system first, I'll show you how to do that now. So to troubleshoot the OS a little further before reinstalling it, we're going to access the computer startup options the same way we did the diagnostic test. We're going to hit power, start tapping on F12 like we did before. So here's the diagnostic test in the middle that we ran earlier in the video, uh, but there are some other things in this menu that we can try. Uh, you have a BIOS flash update here, and then a BIOS update option here to install the latest BIOS update. That Both of these are not a bad idea to try, especially if you've ruled out the hard drive, you've ruled out the other things. These aren't bad things to try now. However, to troubleshoot the OS, right down here, support assist OS recovery, analyze, repair, and restore your system. We're going to click on that. When you go into that window, you may see several options based on your version of BIOS. Again, a lot of this depends on what you know to have already happened with your computer. A lot of you will have had this issue once a Windows update processes, and then you can't run it. There'll be an option there to uninstall last update. You would click on that. Uh, sometimes there's a recovery image. If you have recovery images set up, you can try reloading a recovery image, in effect resetting your computer. If the reset doesn't work, if the uninstalling last update doesn't work, if all these things don't work, we're left again at reinstalling the operating system. And again, there'll be video links below in the description on how to reinstall Windows 10 and how to reinstall Windows 11. So I just took you through the main causes of this issue in Adele. I hope one of those was your cause. Uh, again, feel free to leave me questions or comments below in the description. Always check out the FAQs there as well first. It could save you some time getting an answer. Uh, guys, please like, share, subscribe if this helped you out. Uh, super thanks is always appreciated. And as stated in the beginning of the video, a few extra words now on my sponsor, NiceHash. So again, NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. And what that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused power online to cryptocurrency miners, and they pay you for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to make some money on the side with no work. It's a great way to start investigating the world of crypto with no added investment. 
Uh, you already own the computer. You already paid for it. This is a great way to start investigating that world. You can use their wallets to hold your cryptocurrency. You can use their research tools to investigate other cryptocurrencies, and you can use their exchange to exchange for other currencies. They have several options. It's a great thing to check out, guys. You can check them out here or leave me a comment, and I'll try to help you out with any questions you have. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.